On August 8, 2014, Scott Cawthon released Five Nights at Freddy's, an indie horror game that has turned into one of the biggest video game franchises of all time. It's been praised time and time again for its unique take on horror gameplay and deep lore, and I'm sure many of you already know how the story goes. However, many fans of the series may not remember the hype that surrounded the release of the earlier games, either through having forgotten or just having not been around at that time. I personally was in middle school, and I actually remember when there was only one game. In this video, I want to take a trip down memory lane and recall the genius way that Scott Cawthon created hype for his new releases through his teasers on his websites. This is the lost art of Five Nights at Freddy's teasers. After the release of Five Nights at Freddy's, the game would quickly explode in popularity, with Markiplier covering the game mere days after its initial release. Scott very quickly realized that he had something with this game, that this was his chance to finally capitalize and become the successful game developer that he had always wanted to be. So he got to work. A little over a month after he released his first game, in September of 2014, he posted a new image to his website and this is where it all began. Grand Reopening, 2015, with a big red 2. Nobody had expected a sequel to be in development so quickly, let alone to come out just the next year, which was already approaching. Another thing to note is that people realized pretty quickly that Freddy in this model is not exactly the same. It's vaguely familiar, but there's a lot of slightly different features. This already began to raise some eyebrows, and the community got to theory crafting. Just about a week later, towards the end of September, Scott would already drop another teaser which exposed a lot more about what the game might entail. Something borrowed, something new. Now we understand why the Freddy in the first image was sorta of disheveled. We're introduced to a brand new character for the first time, which may not seem like a big deal now with how many that we have in this huge cast, but back then this was major. We only had the original four and Golden Freddy, but now that we could maybe even guess there would be a whole set of new characters. Yet again, within the next week, Scott would upload the next teaser. It showed the Pirate Cove curtains and another insert of the two, and a new Foxy animatronic, thus confirming the previous suspicions of a whole new set of characters. People noticed pretty quickly that, interestingly, this new Foxy didn't really seem to be the same gender as the old one, but I'm not even going to try to talk about that debate. At this point, it was pretty known that this would be a weekly thing, with the next teaser, No Place to Run, and Exactly One Place to Hide, being released around October 16th. In my opinion, this was probably the craziest and most revealing teaser of them all, and this one got me and most of the community the most hyped. There's a lot that you can interpret here. This is the first time that we got to see the new office, though obviously we had no way of knowing that this was the office. And it also introduced us to Withered Foxy for the first time, and the mask mechanic. Two more things that were more on the speculative side was that some people were even guessing that there's no doors because of the text, which is an obvious enough assumption, and the light also made people think that maybe a flashlight mechanic was being introduced and some people even thought that we'd be hiding inside of an entire suit, which would have been kinda cool, but in retrospect obviously wouldn't work. Then we'd roll into November, and then nearly a month would pass with no new teaser. In this time, we'd receive a trailer, which is probably what Scott was busy working on, so the theory crafting was still in full swing. The game was looking pretty good, and with how finished and polished it already looked, it seemed like a January 2015 release could be assumed. Then, this teaser dropped. At first, it doesn't seem like much, but when brightened, though the more popular term would later be the puppet, upon reveal, definitely the more popular name was the marionette. And we got to see our first look at the game's map, and we're left to theorize what the hell this warning sign even meant. This is the last teaser that we'd receive before the game's release, and with the 2015 release date, it would truly be at least two months till we'd get the game in January. Not even a week after FNAF 2 dropped, Scott would update his page to this offline picture. 
possibly signifying that he was done for the time being and that people should just enjoy the new game. With the release of this game, it was clear upon completing it that it was not a sequel, but actually a prequel, which almost nobody saw coming. Until the end of the first week of December, it would be radio silence from Scott. That is, until he updated his page to display this. Now, I'm gonna be honest, I'm not sure if Scott ever intended to release FNAF 2 in 2015 or not, or if he just lied purposefully to generate hype through the expectation subversion, but it was clear that he knew how to capitalize on this series hype, because this was big. But for the rest of December, he changed it to just say, Merry Christmas, and that was it for this month. Then, right after the new year, we would get this new image. This didn't really look like any character we'd ever seen before. The popular guesses were Foxy, Golden Freddy, or maybe even Fredbear, who we learned about in the previous game. Many assumed Fredbear or Golden Freddy because it kind of fit with the text, I am still here, but we still didn't really know what that meant at the time. A lot of people also quickly realized that the strange eyes didn't share with any other character that we knew so far. They were almost human looking. People also tried to flip half of the face to get a clearer picture, and yeah, in retrospect, that didn't really help very much. This is really goofy looking. A week and a half later, we'd get our next FNAF 3 teaser, which showed the scrapped remains of the toy animatronics. This essentially confirmed that it would take place at least after FNAF 2. The image was named What Can We Use, which implied that the parts for these new animatronics were being retrofitted maybe for use in another animatronic, but nobody really knew what that meant. When the image was brightened, we finally got a better look at our new animatronic. People were pretty quick to assume that it was a Bonnie costume, and not everybody was convinced yet, but it was pretty much universal. After only two teasers on January 26th, the trailer would drop. This trailer would reveal a lot less compared to the second game, and throughout the trailer, there was text that read, He will come back. He always does. We have a place for him. Which would then reveal a small cutscene of the character convulsing, also confirming the Bonnie costume suspicions because of the ears. Though some people at some point for whatever reason thought that this character might be a hybrid or whatever, yeah, I don't really know what the community was smoking between FNAF 2 and 3, so I'm just gonna pretend like that didn't happen. The day after the trailer dropped, Scott would change his website to display the text he always does from the trailer, except in purple. This kind of siphoned the theories into the right direction, as many people thought that it was originally referring to maybe the phone guy or some other characters, but now it was clear the text was referring to the purple guy, the child murderer who we found out more about in the previous game's minigames. Then he would change the website back to the previous teaser the next day. On February 3rd, Scott would upload a picture of the map for FNAF 3, which, when brightened, would reveal a vent system connecting the map. On February 15th, Scott would make a post on Steam titled Early Beta Testing Successful, which would reveal the new character's name, Springtrap, in an easter egg on the post. Another Steam post on that day claimed that he was hacked, and it would lead to a game jolt link that would appear to be the actual full FNAF 3 game, but it was just a troll. The first of many trolls. Thanks, Scott. Very cool. A month after the previous teaser, Scott would release two teasers within two days, showing off the Phantom animatronics for the first time, which were retextured models of previous characters that we were already familiar with. The Balloon Boy one had a giant number 10 on it, which Daco immediately assumed was a countdown. But if you brighten it up, guys, there's a 10! There's a freaking 10 there! Which means Five Nights at Freddy's 3, the demo, or the full game, I don't know, is going to be released. The 10. And it probably was a countdown, at least at first. Scott emailed many popular YouTubers with early demo versions of the game to show off, another genius marketing decision on his part, and rather than adhering to this alleged countdown, Scott just said, I'm kidding, it's actually gonna come out tomorrow. Following the release of the third game, the website would update to a spotlight shining down on a Freddy hat, and it seemed like this time Scott was really done. 
This was his final goodbye to the beloved fanbase that he had nurtured, and the story was finally complete. It's gone. It's- it's gone. What- where'd it go? Now, originally, Scott had planned a three-game trilogy, but the simple fact of the matter was that people weren't happy with the jump scare. This alone drove him to make a fourth game, allowing him to clarify some lore in the process. Once the hat vanished, the community went up in flames. It had hardly been any time since the drop of the third game, so this was just crazy. Even though this seemed to be the trend, people were never going to get used to this. Then we got this. A terrifying rendition of Freddy Fazbear, who may have been the one to pick up the hat. The text reads, The Final Chapter, Halloween 2015. If the image was brightened and had its contrast increased, we would see the word Nightmare across the bottom of the screen, which led people to call these the Nightmare Animatronics, a name that would stick. A week and a half later, Nightmare Bonnie. There was new text, Was It Me? Which was immediately connected to the Bite of 87, the tragic event detailed in the first game that still has people kind of scratching their heads to this day. On May 16th, which is actually my birthday, we got Chica. On 29th of May, Foxy. Then on June 11th, this. It was sort of similar to the first spotlight and Freddy hat image, but this time they were purple and there was a bow tie. There's only one animatronic with a purple hat and a bow tie that we know of so far. In the bottom right corner, when brightened, there was partially occluded text, but people were able to figure out pretty quickly that it says, property of Fred Bear's family diner. From there, people quickly theorized that this game may serve to clarify what exactly Fred Bear's was and what had happened there, since it was mentioned offhandedly by the phone guy in FNAF 2. Then, June 25th, this image. If you went into the source code of the website, yes, seriously, Scott was giving us teasers through the HTML of his goddamn website now, which would actually end up being a normal occurrence. There was text that read, uh, G S F E. CFBS. But if the letters were all moved back by one letter in the alphabet, which is called a Caesar cipher apparently, we would get Fredbear. Next, we were welcomed to a mini version of Springtrap named Plush Trap, another thing found through the code, with the text, Terrible Things Come in Small Packages. Four days later, the trailer would be dropped. But then like before, Scott started sending copies out to YouTubers through email for playtesting. Keep in mind, it was still late July, and the game had a projected release date of Halloween. Then, he released it 10 days after the trailer dropped on July 23rd anyways. Then, Scott updated the page to say, The End. Thanks for playing. Then on August 2nd, it was updated to include every animatronic from every game so far, and it really seemed like the absolutely perfect send-off for the series. This was it. Wait a minute, what the hell is that thing? Okay, so eventually every character was updated to this like cute, like chibi art style or whatever, and he announced that it would be Five Nights at Freddy's World, and we got our tentative 2016 release date, apparently for real this time. Then leading up to the original Halloween 2015 release date for FNAF 4, Scott began to tease the upcoming Halloween DLC for that game. After the release of the trailer for FNAF World, Scott updated his website on November 2nd to include this picture. Uh, uh, it says, see what you've all done. To this day, no one's completely sure what Scott meant by this. Some people theorized it may have been a reflection of Scott's mental health following the backlash for FNAF World, uh, but we'll never really know. Later, it was changed to this weird balloon boy head that was kind of cut off. Thingy, uh, and it says madness takes many forms. Uh, some people think that this implies the previous post was just a way to set the tone for darker hidden themes in FNAF World, and it was just taken a little too far too quickly. His website was briefly changed to advertise the release of the first FNAF book, The Silver Eyes, and later was changed to another Christmas message like the previous year. He would release FNAF World on January 21st, which is funny because he had made a Steam post that day saying he was going to post it tomorrow, 
Uh, but we all know at this point he's terrible with release dates, but hey, at least it actually was in 2016. The game's initial reception was kinda meh, and he would update the game later several times and also make it free, as shown on the FNAFworld.com website. But on ScottGames.com, something far more mysterious was happening. Lines. Just... lines. I mean, I mean, what the hell does that even mean? Well, on February 26th, an I and an N were added, so now, I mean, we can assume it was supposed to spell something out, but with only two letters, we still had no clue. On April 23rd, 2016, Scott was finally tired of trolling millions of people, so he updated it to the full teaser, which was Five Nights at Freddy's Sister Location, with a brand new humanoid animatronic in the background, and the text, there was never just one. On May 16th, oh boy, my birthday again. We got a new teaser, showing off the new animatronic fully. Just five days after that, we got the game's trailer, and received another teaser on June 17th, which said, there's a little of me in every body, and showed this really weird looking animatronic. We would find out later that this is Ennard, and this definitely helped to clarify Ennard pretty early on, so thanks for that, Scott. Once again, the website source code came into play, and we found a schedule of the animatronics. This implied that this wasn't really one set pizzeria or restaurant location like the previous games, or maybe they were being rented out individually. Some more digging later showed that there was an Afton Robotics text in the code, which uh, was strange as well, because Afton was the stand-in name for the purple guy in the previously mentioned Silver Eyes book. On July 9th, we got to see the Biddy Babs, and then the next teaser, which showed off the controlled shock mechanic, with the text, get back on your stage, now. When brightened, you can see these uh, weird, these tiny ballerina looking things, kinda. Uh, and they ended up being the mini arena, so people guessed pretty, pretty correctly on that one. On the two year anniversary of Five Nights at Freddy's, on August 8th, 2016, Scott released a bunch of behind the scenes images onto his website, which I think is really cool. About a week later, a Reddit post was made where the user had found and leaked the voice actors for the upcoming Sister Location game. Well, the last time that copyrighted character names were leaked pretty recently, Scott didn't care at all, so it doesn't really seem like that'd be an issue. Don't worry, don't worry, this is, this is another troll. It originally says cancelled due to leaks, but you can see a snippet of a news article when the photo was edited that attributed the closing of Circus Baby's Pizza World to gas leaks. So he just took this as an opportunity to add lore circumstantially, which is really funny. On the 27th of August, a new teaser would be posted with Ennard's mask paired with a release date. Oh boy. With some more source code digging, when two lines of text were taken from the code and pasted into the Scott Games URL, it would lead you to the map for Sister Location. Jesus, that is, that is so specific. Which, when brightened, would reveal two secret rooms. Then on the 24th, Ennard was gone. On October 7th, just as planned, Sister Location was actually released directly on time for once. Ten days after the release on the 17th, a Custom Night DLC was teased on the website. On the 27th of November, another teaser, with a December 1st release date that he also actually ended up adhering to. Perhaps Scott is now a changed man. Then, for six months, radio silence. Finally, on June 11th, 2017, FNAFworld.com updated with this picture. Nobody was sure exactly what to make of it. On Scott Games, the website was updated to include promotional art for the next in line FNAF book, The Twisted Ones. Now come August, the third anniversary of FNAF rolled around, and we got to see another set of behind the scenes images. Then, 10 days later, on the 18th, this image dropped. We didn't really know what it meant at the time, but it was art related to the next major installment in the series. Then a whole two months would pass, and the image would update. Meanwhile, on FNAFworld.com, the eyes from before, uh, they, they've closed. What is happening? Then, on December 1st, 2017, a year after the release of the Custom Night DLC for Sister Location, we'd get this teaser. Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria Simulator, coming soon. Two days later, a gameplay teaser, and a countdown. 
It was obvious to most that this was just gonna be another lighthearted game, kinda like FNAF World, as Scott had posted a few months prior that he was feeling very burnt out and exhausted. Then, the day after, he made an apology Steam post because he never intended for the minority, who were actually speculating it was going to be a bigger game, to get any hype. After apologizing, he released the game a day early, the next day. In classic Scott fashion, he had trolled everyone. Again. <laughs> On February 18th, two months later, he'd update the website with 40 empty triangles, which would update periodically to show a roster of animatronics for the upcoming Pizzeria Simulator extension, Ultimate Custom Night. He would update the website with progress on the game's development, featuring a picture of the new office, which was a pretty cool way to reveal it. Then, on June 27th, a few months later, the game was released. Then, another long period of radio silence, for about eight months. Though this wasn't to say that community wasn't active. People were busy with the 50-20 mode, which was a very difficult game mode in the new Ultimate Custom Night, and Daco won an interview with Scott Cawthon for completing it. Then, the website was changed. On March 11th, 2019, we got promotional art for the next game, being worked on by the newly involved Steel Wool Studios for FNAF VR Help Wanted. Everything is working as intended, quote from Fazbear Entertainment. It also said, remember Jeremy, in some hidden text, which teased this new game might actually have been canon, despite the definitive story conclusion of the previous game. There were also some secret screenshots to be found. On FNAF's fifth anniversary, Scott would post this promotional art on his website, announcing the next major installment to be released in 2020. We all know how that went, though. FNAFworld.com would update to FNAF 57 Freddy in Space. At this point, Scott was just relishing in the memes. And on September 29th, it was updated to... <sighs> Seriously? On the same day, Scott Games was updated to a closer silhouette shot of Lamrock Freddy, and on November 5th, it would be updated to include a faint silhouette of a bunny suit in the background. We know later that this is Vanny. Then at some point, it would be updated to promote the new FNAF AR game, and later change to more promotional art for the next major installment. On March 24th, we got to see Monty, or Montgomery, confirmed the name of the file, and all of this culminated into a name drop for the new game, Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach. June 11th revealed Vanessa, and August 7th revealed Vanny, the villain. The next day, on the 6th anniversary of Five Nights at Freddy's, more security breach teasers were posted, and these were the last teasers that we received until the release of the game. At this point, it was obvious that Scott was already trying to take more of a backseat in the series' development, being less and less involved, as Steel Wool Studios seemed to be doing most of the heavy lifting following Ultimate Custom Night's release. June 2021 came, and after a controversy where Scott received many serious threats online over his political affiliation, Scott finally decided that it was time for him to retire from game development. The last thing that was displayed on his website was this image, and I'm gonna go ahead and read it out loud for you. Before I say anything else, check out this awesome piece of fan art. Pretty amazing stuff, right? I have boxes and boxes of artwork like this from fans that I've saved over the years. I've tried to answer as many letters as I could, and I apologize to anyone that I missed somehow. Someday, when I have a bigger living room, maybe I'll make a giant collage of all the fan art I've collected. Stuff like this has made it all worthwhile to me over the last seven years. I've had a blessed, fulfilling, and rich career. I've been shown great kindness, and I've tried to show great kindness in return. I've tried to make some good games, <laughs> let the debate ensue, and I've witnessed the creation of possibly the most creative and talented fanbase on the planet. But here, on the seventh anniversary of the first game's trailer, as I realized that I was in my mid-thirties when I created the series and now I'm approaching my mid-forties, I realized that I miss a lot of things that I got to focus on before Five Nights at Freddy's became such a success. I miss making games for my kids, I miss doing it just for fun, and I miss making RPGs even though I stink at it. 
all of this to say that I am retiring. I have been shown tremendous love and support over this last week, a lot of which has come from the LGBTQ community. The kindness shown to me has been surreal. Is this the end of Five Nights at Freddy's? No. This just means that someone else will eventually be running the show. Someone of my choosing and someone that I trust. We will have to wait and see how it all plays out, but an announcement will be made at some point. I have six kids now, although one of them is currently the size of a blueberry, and I love them dearly. They are my whole world and my whole universe. I want to focus my attention on them, focus on protecting them, and spend my time making things for them. I only ask that my fan base respect my decision. I will still be around, just not in the capacity that I used to be. What a blessed career I've had, what wonderful people I've met, and what a tremendous blessing to have been able to know all of you. Thank you so much. See you on the flip side. Then, to this day, the website is just black. Scott may be done with his major involvements in the games, but will always remember the beautiful franchise that he built from the ground up with his blood, sweat, and tears just for us. Five Nights at Freddy's will forever go down in horror and video game history. Thank you so much for watching. See you on the flip side.